Welcome everyone to the Baked Fish Brains, episode number four. We are going to talk about some very pressing, pressing current events in RuneScape. And the current event is the 2024 second half of the year roadmap. So I'll uh, I'll edit it and put it on screen for you guys post production because I'm too lazy to put it on screen right now. <laughs> so I think for this uh, episode we should just quickly go over all of the new stuff that they announced, what we think about it, and then maybe at the end we can just talk about 20, uh, 2025, maybe the survey. Uh, if you guys didn't do a survey, I'll, I can just generally tell you guys what was on the survey and some special stuff. And where we hope to see the game go from there. So let's just go straight down the line. So the first thing is at the end of the summer, they have a new boss dungeon called Sanctum of Rebirth. And this might be, I guess, a pretty already a really big topic because all, the three of us are very big into PVM, especially group PVM. Mm -hmm. And I don't think so. I they said that the size of it is going to be one to four, which is not a great sign for group PVM. And I'll explain why. It's because, and and you guys, you know, you can you can add on if uh, anything I miss. Uh, the reason why bosses and uh, and in you know PVM combat encounters. When the size is small, like 1 to 3, 1 to 4, all that, it's inherently not going to be that complicated because you have to be able to do the entire fight as a solo person. Meaning, yeah. meaning there can't realistically be roles, or, or at least complex roles. Like, Jagex tried to make roles with, uh, with Vorkath, uh, you know, they they just made but they just did it really awkwardly to where if you're in a group larger than one the you know someone would tank Vorkath and someone else would tank Zamorgul and just sort of spread the damage like that but the scaling of all the minions and the scaling of the damage was all all sort of whack so it, group Vorkath just overall sucks like it was just it's just mm -hmm. really poorly balanced and then solo, it just doesn't matter. You just you just face tank all the damage and just eat through it with a with a blood reaver. So the whole fight is just a mess. It it doesn't really make sense. Um, not like the old old bosses back in the day where there was dedicated roles and and the all of the damage where it was dispersed was very intentionally designed to you know to go to like you know. The bomb tank, you know, for example, at Virago, or like the base tank, at you know, at certain intervals. Vorkath mm -hmm. was just like a mess. So when we when we go back to looking at Sanctum of Rebirth, they said it's one to four. So it already tells me that the mecha the mechanics are probably not that complicated. But I could be wrong. You know, I I I, I don't know what Mod Sponge and those guys are cooking. They they are supposedly gonna have a podcast or something on Monday I think that we might check out. Uh, we'll either talk more about it. But yeah. Um, also, really quick thing. Uh, actually, I'll 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 bring it up after. So, what do you guys think about you know this dungeon thing? For me, at least, like mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems is like you can't. Like, it's a lot easier, like, when stuff gets power crept, to have stuff that was group become solo. Yep. But if you're just releasing it on release as solo, like, what's the point of the group aspect of it then? Like... You bring up a really good point. Yeah, I feel that. Like, like, not even, like, like, let's just ignore the reward side of everything. Let's just talk, like, purely the mechanical design of the fights. If you can do it solo, the mechanics aren't complex enough to even warrant other people. Yeah, I totally. And agree. that for me is like a turnoff already. Like, yeah. Like literally, one of the best role from raids was the fact that CPR even had to exist because mm -hmm. 
your your poison tank? Well, you're kind of at the mercy of someone you else. You need <laughs> someone to to revive you, or yeah. else you just die. Yep. And those mechanics were very very well done. Forcing it, it's like this weird. It's this weird dichotomy that exists where like people want solo things, but. When you do solo only bosses, there's only there's only so many types of mechanics you can do that like and then it's like very limiting in the grand scheme of things. Yep, I agree. I think I think um and you know, maybe if someday we we'd have like Mod Sponge on here, maybe he maybe he, there's a reason why they are not or at least in the past, they haven't really explored very complicated group mechanics. And, you know, the, the most complicated group mechanics that we've really had was... I, maybe... Honestly, it was OG Green Bomb, yeah, in my yeah. opinion. Something like OG Green Bomb, where, like, where you, you had you to do the, the square. Bomb. Because... Yeah. because because you d you didn't have like all the power creep where your HP was just like ridiculously yeah. high and you couldn't like overeat yeah and you couldn't power burst the vitality so you just you just ate yeah. the bomb and just freaking probably died yeah that that was probably the pinnacle of group mechanics in in RS at least I would I would say um the second one is probably just all of Mirage phase in Yaka yeah where you mm -hmm. have to you have to coordinate exactly who you know, planks which thing, who tanks which thing, so you don't just, like, get freaking... Like, a guy just gets hit by yeah. two Yakka Mirage and just freaking dies. And, like, it's a lot easier to tank yeah. now, obviously, because of all the power creep, but back then, like, you had it to just no barricade, joke. and your barricade ran out, and you just, like, per prayed. <laughs> Literally, you, like, just ate through it or something. You couldn't just soul split damage through it because you just couldn't deal that much damage to heal in general. Yeah, so... You you yeah you're totally right that in this new in this new boss thing you immediately cannot have a mechanic like old green bomb where you had to bounce it or or mirage phase at Yakamaru like there's just no way you physically cannot have mm -hmm. something complicated like that with if it's and, designed and I mean, like, one to four it doesn't even have to be like incredibly complicated but because of the fact that you've like the solo is in mind like so they're not even just like two people. But like in Final Fantasy, for example, really common high end mechanic is called rot, where essentially you have to pass. It's like a debuff, and you have to pass it along at certain it's, intervals. It's if, basic... you, if you don't pass it, you die. Basically, right? It's basically the blue at Yaka. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Where you, um, you yeah. have to pass it, and you can't pass it to the same person that already got it. Yep. But uh, like yep. Th that kind of mechanic can only exist in group content. Oh yeah, for sure. Because if it, it's solo, it, requires, it just does nothing. <laughs> yeah, it it, re it requires yeah. coordination. You can't exist <laughs> because you you have to pay attention to like, okay, this person's passing it to me, so I'm not just AFKing and like not looking at my character, and then and then you have to realize, oh, who who already got it, so I have to go to someone else. It, it, it but requires it's not even that. There's no one to pass it to in a solo encounter. No, like, no, no. The yeah, mechanic that's, that's what I'm doesn't saying. exist. The, the mechanic cannot <laughs> exist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the the mechanics. So Brain is saying the mechanics are in general heavily limited by the fact that they design it for solo, and I think now let me just let me just sort of speak for the the general RS player base right now. I feel like a lot of people, uh, at, at least the vocal ones. I I I you know I I don't really I don't really know the sentiment nowadays. It's it's kind of hard to tell because most games. It's the 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 players that speak out. It's it's just like whoever's the loudest, right? Like the loudest person on on Reddit could just be like a guy that hates group PVM. They think that all the AODers are toxic as frick, which you know probably is true. Um, so they're like, oh, I hate people that do group content, so everything should be solo. And then freaking Mod Robin sees that and it's like, oh, okay, I agree, everything should be soloable. And then and then we had what happened for the last like seven years where they just didn't release a single group boss. Mm -hmm. Um. And even once they did release like Solak in, in at the beginning, they just turned into a solo boss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. So let let me just speak for, let me just speak to all of all of you guys who think that solo is great. I I am on your side. I think solo is great. I like the fact that RS can be soloed a lot. 
I don't think everything in this game should be soloed, though. Exactly. I think there like, should be content that is group oriented because this is an MMO and MMOs thrive off of variety and thrive off of playing with your friends. If you don't want to play with your friends, you'd be playing like Skyrim. Just play like a really fun solo game that you can do whatever you want on it. Um, yeah, like, like if you like look at Telos, Telos is yes, even though is, I personally don't solo, like the boss, solo boss, it is it is an amazing solo player boss at the end of the yes, day. Yeah, exactly. Having well group designed. Telos would absolutely ruin Telos. <laughs> yeah, yep. it just wouldn't make sense. But it's a great boss. And and I and for those of you who think that oh, group boss is or sorry, a solo boss is super so bosses that are small group to solo are really nice because it's way more casual. I don't have to like join an AOD team that are really toxic. I would argue that I think group bosses in a lot of cases, especially big group bosses, sometimes can actually be even more casual for people than the small groups. Because if you join a 10 man raid, there's, there could be like three people that are barely paying attention and just like you'd clear the raid because most of the mechanics are done by a few people like you know that are doing a lot of roles and the dps is so you know it's 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 average from 10 people not an average of like 3 people if you do a 3 person boss and you're just like really freaking awful at dps it's going to be extremely obvious that you can't do the fight and and people can't carry you because because you know the scaling you'd bring everyone down. But if it was a 10-person <laughs> boss, you'd bring the, the it down a lot less. So in a lot of ways, it actually is easier to, to teach new players in a big boss than a freaking small boss. Like me taking someone to learn like 2,000 Enraged Zami is incredibly hard because it just doubles the HP and then this person has to like deal the same damage as I deal in solo. It's like there's no freaking way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'll just look at my introduction to PVM. I was uh with my... Main hand chaotic crossbow, exactly. off hand armadil crossbow, exactly. and death lotus gear brought to raids. <laughs> right? So, like, you, you, you were not before then, were not super, like, super deep into PVM. But after we, we took you to raids, it gave you a chance to learn the game at a, mm. at a very, very high yeah. level. And, and it didn't require you to have to, like, do all these freaking DPS checks and stuff like that, like 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 modern bosses yeah. now. Because if I like, if we just took you to like two man or like three man Vorkath, it would have just been hell. Yeah, mm -hmm. like 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 Snow is saying in chat, it, she, to to learn two K Zami, she literally just had to go in at a two K Zami kill, and Zami just had twice as much health. And with 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 me doing a soul, like it was just me and her. It it, it took mm -hmm. us like freaking days to do it. Because that's just how the scaling works. But if Zami was a yeah. ten man boss, then she could learn it at you know much more easily because there's a lot of people there. And and you you guys already who who have done like five you know five man versus two man Zami, you can tell the difference that it's a lot easier to to learn at in a five man than it is a two man. And 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 it goes even higher than that. Like ten man's even easier. Twenty man it's even easier to learn. Um, I don't think Jags mm -hmm. would ever release a 20 man raid like WoW does, and I don't know how big Final Fantasy is. Oh, 20, definitely not. But uh, uh, eight is like the standard in Final Fantasy. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I, I guess WoW is the only one that usually has like 20 plus. Um, it, it's not the only one. It's just yeah. a lot more. Like a lot of the older MMOs have more right. large, large scale rating. Yeah. So yeah. So so basically, to to the people who say that. Oh, it's more casual to be smaller group. I, it's more it's more easy to play casually in a small group environment. I disagree. I think, I think it's easier to play in a large group environment. It's just the problem is that the teams you've been on have probably just been very toxic, and but like you, you just only encounter people that just you know they they just run a challenge gem like oh uh you want to join my team Go, join this challenge gem so I can see what you're doing and that is really toxic I I don't like that either. But there are a lot of groups that play this game, especially back in the day with raids. There were a lot of very, very uh, learner-friendly groups, and that did Virago, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Y you just have to find them. They they exist. A lot of them exist. A lot of people like playing with new players, 
and bringing them into their, you know, into PVM because it's a very uh, fun and enjoyable activity to group to do with a group of friends. So yeah, that's I guess our summary of uh, group PVM. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, Bush? I mean, the issue with a lot of the content in this game is they keep putting DPS checks. Right. If they put these DPS checks into a group encounter, the game isn't really designed around a DPS check in a group encounter, in my opinion. Because, like, is that? there is no way to revive yourself other than a sign. Like, if you die, you're just out of the fight. Uh, most of the time. Okay, but, like, technically... Technically, you know, in the very beginning, like at Virago, when you had to, in phase two, after after you like after you like do the spam click, there's like a very small DPS check. Yeah. And then and then like even the last phase that when you when you're on the freaking, uh, phase five, like it's a DPS check. I I think the DPS yeah. checks in like, done in done. Artists are like they're not, they're they're not done. Some horribly. of them are done really well, but a lot of them are just like, like Zami for example. Zami's okay. DPS check is terrible. You're talking about the last P7. phase. Yeah, P7 right. Zami DPS check is terrible design. Oh yeah, it is. Like, the, the, it's not the, the designed DPS well check, for this type of game. And if you guys are wondering why that is, I just, I'm just gonna explain it for the people listening. If you don't understand why we're saying that, the reason why the DPS check at Zami versus Virago, the last phase of Zami versus the last phase of Virago, is very different. Is the DPS phase, the the DPS check at Virago is a is like a tug of war. So he, it, so he hits you and you hit him, and if you just uh, do like a ton of damage, you'll just push him to the end, and like he can hit you a bunch, but it doesn't matter because you're doing like a ton of damage, and and you'll just push him all the way end, kind of yeah. kind of like how it is now because the deep the power creep is so hard, but um, anyways, like you can sort of mess up and he'll push you forward, but you can recover from that and just keep pushing him back by by just like yeah. you know playing better. But at Zami, if you just make like two mistakes, especially at high enrage, you just completely lose the kill. You lose the kill because the yep. mechanic is, oh, he just gained too much. He just gained too much energy because you took too long. So you just completely fail your 15 minute kill. It, it's it's yeah, a exactly. horrendously designed uh, final phase. It's it has no it has no um, leeway. Yeah, no there leeway. Is no recovery. You, you, you basically like... just have to like do it perfectly or you fail the kill, which is just, which is just horrendous yep. design. It is terrible design. So that's that's what what that's what where he's coming from. So I hope they don't do anything like that. Yeah. Because it's just it's not learner friendly. It's not like healthy at yeah, all. Yeah, I think I think anything. No, you're you're definitely right. I think the DPS check that they did at Virago is is a lot better, and I think even the one at Solak is bearable yeah. because as Solak. You could have a person mind tank for like thirty years, <laughs> like in the mind. Yeah, exactly. for the last yeah. Like, you have, so, so you have like you, you have, have a mechanic option. to to like last longer. But at, at Zami, there is no mechanic that makes you last longer. You just do it, or you, if you don't do it, you just die. Yep. Uh. So. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna have DPS checks or if it's just gonna be like a survival a survival test. We'll we'll have to see. Um. Right, is there anything I else? hope there's mechanic, but obviously, mm. it being like Brian said, it being a solo or up to four man, there's little to no hope of an actual mechanical challenge. Yeah, we'll see. Oh yeah, I, w I wanted to bring up because uh, you guys were saying, <laughs> I know we're going really long onto this first segment, but you know, this is it's only because like we're very passionate about PVM. Um, so I think. What Brain said earlier brings up a very good point. I, I don't even know if he said this intentionally, but you were saying, if the boss can be soloed, why even do it in a group? And exactly. That, exactly. that is a sentiment that I hope you guys, a lot of PVMers, I'm sure if you're listening to this, you'll also understand that once you hit a certain level of, of this game and you're able to do bosses, you're going to think to yourself, if I can do this boss solo, why would I do it in a group? Because, yes, you can play with a with a group of friends, and it might be fun and all that. But a lot of the times, especially if if you want to be if you want to be efficient, 
you'll realize that doing it in a group is just completely inefficient versus doing a solo because you have to you know make schedules plan stuff with people when you could just do it by yourself or you know if you are slightly better than your friend and it's gonna feel like your friend's gonna feel like oh i'm being carried and it kind of feels bad or if you're worse than your friend then you'll feel like you're being carried and you're literally just slowing him down um it just yep I've it, felt is, that it both is it is a feels bad um and i now and now you're, and you might wondering like, oh like well doesn't it feel bad doing it in a group uh well it, it does and it doesn't because it doesn't because you have to do it in a group <laughs> so so uh I think, I I think if you have the option to do something solo, you're just adding a layer of feels bad to it, which which doesn't need to be there if, if by designing a group boss. So I just wanted to add that. And uh, if you guys do a lot of PVM on RS3, please please let me know in the comments how you, what do you think about that? Because that's just the sentiment that I feel. Again, like I love PVMing in a group. I just, I I just cannot f get over the feeling of, oh, I'm like slowing someone down, or oh, I'm I'm. You know, being slowed down, right? Uh, by by doing it in a group versus just me doing a solo. When it doesn't need to be like that. It's just like designed that way. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let me uh, let's let's move on very quickly. We're still on the same <laughs> we're still literally on the same same bullet point. But I just want to talk <laughs> about the the fact that they revealed that one of the rewards is 100% going to be the tier 95 one and orb. They they didn't say if it was just like straight up the one and orb, but it it probably is just the straight up the one and orb. Like it's not going to be something you have to craft with something else, you know. Like you combine it with like the size mix and the appraisal. It, it's probably just going to be this this raw item. Um, which, you know, for Magic users, very exciting. Magic is surely going to be back, back in business, full throttle. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I'm curious what, uh, what, what do you guys, I guess in a, in a broader question, because like we know, we know the one and orb is going to do something. It's probably not, it's still gonna have some effect. It's it's not gonna just be like just like a raw wand and orb that does nothing. It's probably gonna be like the Langs, where the Langs had these crazy effect added to it, um, but for magic. So yeah. what? Yeah. What buffs do you want to see? I guess it kind of goes back to our combat question, but uh, like what what buffs do you do you guys want to see to the to the to the combat styles in general with these new bosses? Hmm. I mean, for melee, the only real answer is that bleeds work under Zerk. It's the it's you can't have this dumb dichotomy of the style like the style oh, totally works right. one way, but her dur yeah. it doesn't work with the main damage you're, you're buffing right. components, so you can't use any of the <laughs> we, bleeds like, during it. Everyone's it's boom. everyone's everyone keeps yeah. saying that. Oh, we don't know how to fix melee. But you're right. If they just made a greater berserk drop from one of these bosses, and it literally all it said was it affects the base damage abilities instead of like a multiplier, meaning it works with bleeds. Like if it just mm -hmm. did that, then melee honestly would be in a pretty cool spot. You would just freaking drop these massive bleeds, and they would just. Yeah, and and, and the and the hit cap is gone. So you're gonna be hit, these bleeds are gonna be hitting like twenty k's or like thirty k's, and it'd be really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but I like, uh, that. like honestly, Meanwhile, in my opinion, scared skiller. Hey, Nate, <laughs> <laughs> and we're we're gonna get to skilling here, uh, so uh, we'll get that very soon, Nate. Yeah, what was it, brain? But uh, like for magic, like. Magic is in such a weird spot, in my opinion. It is. You know, you're totally right. Uh, and, and I say this as like a certified magic hater, Andy, because of how long it's what like reigned frick. supreme. Do not use magic hater and then my name after that. <laughs> okay, so what, but, uh, what do you say about magic? But uh, 
like in my opinion, either like actually making like any spell channelable like into borrowed power uh, would be like a really nice buff or make it so that it's easier to like like one thing I hate is like 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 let's say you're like, using spell book swap for something. I would much rather just wish that I could like use a spell and if I need a spell book swap, that's just part of the runes to get to it rather than clicking eight different buttons. Yeah. Because I'm on you one know, style. Actually, and... You make a yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. You, you don't want to like have to yeah. like like I either add in game macros or just make it so you could just have it all in one button. Yeah, I agree. Well it, it's not even like make it in one button. So like let's say like, uh mm. Like, let's say I want to use Entangle specifically, and I'm on Ancients. Yeah. I, I would love to just be able to have, ent- like, just click Entangle, and it knows, all right, you're going to have to spell book oh, swap. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. You know you're going to have to spell book swap. It just swap. does just, the spell swap. Yeah, for it sure. It just does the for spell sure. and eats the cost of the runes yeah, for spell book swap. That would be a great, a great change. For Heck, sure. even, even if they double the cost of the runes, I would be so down with that, too. Like, I it, it would help. A lot. Yeah. Okay, I agree. That that's kind of like just quality of life stuff. But I totally agree. But uh, yeah. I guess this would technically go for all styles. Um, okay. and they kind of introduced it with necromancy. Yeah. Um, but I w- I would like for there to be like an easy way to spend adrenaline that isn't on a timer. It's like take like wild okay. magic snapshot all that, like. It, it it does a lot of damage, but it's on a timer. I, I actually I okay, I will say I think there is a way to do that for all three styles. It's just the EOF. You you if but it is more annoying though, because you have you have to but like swap I, I your just EOF. Want it, I I just want it as like a base thing. That way it's like I don't want to like burn through all of my adrenaline. I just want to kind of take the cat like take the edge off kind of thing. Like okay. it, it's not nearly as strong as like your other thresholds, but you know, it's gonna do more than like basics in general like like th- finger uh-huh. of death's like the best example i can think of but that one's slightly different because it has like stack system that it also works with but the premise behind it is what i want like if i i have an ability in like let's say like i've got a sunshine window coming up and i'm pulling all of my resources for it hmm. but i still want to you know just d- shut a little damage to the boss and not just press my basics and just be sitting on a hundred adren waiting hmm. waiting before I can actually do all the setup I need. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I, I'm going to, I'm going to say for magic. Now you, 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 you kind of, you were talking about like, Oh, doing all these things at once. That actually makes it sound that, that actually sounds like something that a wizard should do. I think the new wand and orb <laughs> Should have I don't know if it should be a passive where it just this just happens like every five abilities or something or if it should be like a special attack, but there should be something where you could just use two abilities at once, kind kind of like how people were freaking doing the 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 thing with ability stalling and stuff like that. Um, oh my god! <laughs> I mean, off global cooldowns. That's that's true. Yeah, I, I don't, something they could do. It, yeah, so, something where like. Where you use the the wand and orb spec, and then your next ability is off global cooldown. Well, no, but that doesn't that doesn't work unless the spec itself did damage. Because if because obviously like if you just press the then you sh- should just use the ability in in the spec timing. Uh, some something like that though. May, I, maybe it'd have to be a passive at that point because it would it would be where you know. But I I like it more as an active because I like I like the thought of like let's say the spec costs 15 adrenaline let's say i press the spec f- four times drinking a dren pot and i can press like five abilities in one global cooldown something <laughs> like that that sounds very magical you know freaking freaking game breaking that's what we need <laughs> yes Would yes welcome welcome you came with came to the talk show live i i mean i think we should get back to to the to the all styles have their own unique thing. And I think that would make magic yeah. pretty unique. Just dump all your adrenaline into this big freaking cannon of five abilities in one <laughs> one global cooldown. Yeah. 
But yeah, what I'd like to see is like the bleeds on melee, obviously, and then something like I want them to expand on the stacking thing for range. Like that would be an interesting thing that they could have for the identity of range, is like stacking poison buffs and stuff like that. You know, uh, like, that's it would be interesting. an interesting. Oh my idea. god! For the for the love of God, make salt the wound. Like, if you <laughs> actually at ten yeah. stacks, like the make best, it like damage. it, it yeah. should do like the like, most would, damage by far. That would, it would be, be a great yeah. identity for it. And like, it, it would, it would, and it would be stronger in group bosses because you'd stack it like way faster with people using ranged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's exactly. Like it would give you a reason to expand your styles of yeah. choice. No, I agree with that. It does, it does have a lot of issues with like balancing, of course, because then it'd be like, okay, well then, shouldn't shouldn't every group boss just be like four people using ranged or something? But yeah, I don't know. It <laughs> it, it, it presents some interesting issues. Uh... Yeah, necromancy already broke the game. Yes, necromancy broke the game, but we're talking about how to how to fix it. You know, we're we're fixing it by breaking all the other styles. We're, yeah, we're breaking all the other styles so it. that it can match necromancy. That's kind of what you're mentioning in the list <laughs> of the combat triangle. Yes, I totally agree, Maria. Giving the identities to uh, giving the identities to other uh, other styles. Oh frick! Wait, this is <laughs> okay. I probably have I probably have to have to disable this for the for podcast. Bubber, peanut butter. <laughs> oh, sorry, got carried away. Nathmatics and Overwatch crowd control. And I'll, 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 I'll have to cut this out. The tide totally of battle fine. abilities like stuns, knockbacks, and disables can create openings for your team to secure victories. What the frick is he talking control. about? About Overwatch? <laughs> no, get out of here, Winston. And no Overwatch. The thrill of strategic gameplay. <laughs> Stop advertising <laughs> Overwatch. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think CC uh, and disruptions, they are a thing in bosses like Telos, um, where it is important to time your, your crowd control on him. Uh, they didn't bring it back because I think it's too complicated for them to design. And also, it might be kind of broken in a group boss, but you can just like chain CC to boss to death. Uh, I honestly think Magic needs to relook at a function as. Uh, how the different spellbooks should have different abilities. Uh, that is an interesting change. Yeah, although, that could be an interesting take. Although I don't know that that requires a lot of a lot of rework for. for that would them. take a so lot. I don't of know reward, if they yeah. want to do that. But it could be an interesting like quest reward where you know there'd be like another ancient quest that makes like the the ancient spellbook give more abilities. Like yeah, I, I can see that. <clears throat> okay. Um. Anyone have any last things about the Sanctum and, like, the rewards? I think we've pretty much talked a lot about it. And uh, we can point. definitely go into further detail once uh, once Mod Sponge reveals more details on it and we have any more comments on it and whatnot. Okay. Um, let's very... I don't know. I, you guys, do you have anything to, to talk about with the fourth conjure for necromancy and more tasks like i don't really have anything to talk about it's just like oh i mean it, it's one of those things like they, they come when they come there's not really yeah. in like, my opinion there's not really info, much we can say on that yeah if we had more info of what it was gonna be mm -hmm. then i'd have something to say but we just have nothing to yeah, go the, off the, of. the fourth the fourth spirit it's just like a massive buff to necromancy because you because with with the with the necromancy like what's it called the i have it on my bar right the uh what is it i don't even know where it is because i'm not wearing my necro frick here a conjure undead army it already can do four so it's literally just free this fourth guy is just a yeah. free summon so whatever it is it's even if it just hits him for, like, 1k damage, like, every couple ticks, that is still, like, a pretty big buff, because it's literally lossless damage. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they're just buffing Necro even more. Like, sure. It's already very broken. They're just buffing it even more. But who knows? Um, magic might be crazy after the new Wanted Orb. And what else they add? <laughs> okay. Uh, mining and smithing. So they mentioned that in, in the... In the uh, reveal i don't I, you guys probably didn't watch it but um they said they're going to add the ores from demonheim to the surface so you're gonna have all the ores from from
from like Novite all the way to Primal on the surface. And okay. you're probably going to be able to combine them into like another Masterwork bar. And I don't know if, if, if it would just be like super freaking Masterwork bar. I don't know. <laughs> um, Interesting. So I don't, they didn't really reveal anything else after that. But to me, that sounds like the thing that is being released is probably tier 99. Maybe higher, but actually it physically can't be higher because we don't have 120 stats. So I, actually, it literally, the highest is 99 right now. Like you can't make yeah, a defensive yeah, tier higher than 99. So I'm going to guess that, like my guess is, is tier 99, like primal outside of the, the new primal is probably just going to be tier 99 tank melee gear. And then the masterwork is going to be tier 99, like power or something like that. That's my guess. Probably. And it'll probably just have like either hopefully a better buffed version of the masterwork armor. Um. So what do you, what do you guys think about mining smithing update in later later summer? I think it's interesting. Um, but it is one of those things like we really need to see more info on it as yeah. to yeah. what it's doing. Um, I mean, it could very well give all everything that we were talking about. It could be like, okay, 120 mining yeah. smithing and tier 99 masterwork now off your bleeds, you know, something like that. Like, Yeah, that would be a yeah. good it, It's good kind of idea. hard to... Like, I'm not really for or against it, I guess. Um, this is the best way to put it. Like, mm -hmm. whatever happens with it happens. You're surprised you're giving me another update? Uh, yeah, I, I am surprised too. But I definitely welcome it because... Because even with Masterwork and all that, it's pretty outdated. And it has been power crept by a lot by uh, the last, like, four years of updates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, er of course, you guys in the comments, let, let us know if you have anything to add to that. Um, yeah, we love melee. We love melee buffs, so give them to us. Okay, skilling boss. They announced a skilling boss for beginning of fall or autumn. So, we talked a lot about skilling bosses already in episode two of Baked Fish Brains. We're all pretty big fans of skilling bosses. You know, there's no, there's no downside to no downside boss, so like yeah, yeah there's why no downside not? To and, and and if the skilling boss is challenging you know provides good rewards i'm sure we'll all love doing it right mm -hmm. yes so you know i'm actually kind of curious what is the skilling boss going to even drop because i think for croesus croesus did drop buffs to skilling but the main selling point was the crypt bloom and I'm, I yeah. don't think, at least, I, I, at least right now, maybe I could be wrong, but like, I, I'm not sure if they want to drop another PVM drop for the skilling boss. It might just be a drop for, honestly, it could be a drop for the mining smithing update and also the woodcutting fletching update. It like, could drop like tools that yeah, go to true. like 120 or, you know, for mining and smithing, which... I'd rather see it drop more for the skilling side than the PvM side. Oh yeah, side. I, 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 yeah. Agree. I think that you know the bosses in old school, right? All, they all drop. I guess there's like a little, like there's like a tiny bit of PvM stuff, but it's like mostly fo focused for skilling. Like if they're gonna drop stuff for PvM, make it so you have to use the items from there to, like, fletch them or smith them into. The stuff for PVM, like you have to actually skill to yeah, exactly. make them useful in a PVM scenario. Right, so it's, they're it's, not just it's, good in it's PVM. It's not just crippling where it just freaking drops the thing and yeah. you just add the stupid exactly. flakes and you're done. Yeah, it takes like two seconds. Yeah, there's a surprise game. That, uh, maybe we'll get 120 best of slot melee gear. Uh, well, we were, we were saying Nath, I don't think we're gonna have 120 melee gear because we the stats are not going to 120. Yeah. So I, they physically cannot make it 120. It's gonna be 99 is the max for that. Unless they just randomly drop 120 combat skills like in the which I don't know, I don't think they're gonna do that. <laughs> they would have announced they would, that. They would have announced that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh. So. 
I kind of lost my train of thought. We we're talking about the oh yeah the the the, the rewards for the skilling boss. I I kind of I kind of want because I'm not gonna lie I, I I kind of want the 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 tools the 120 the 100 plus skilling tools to be gate kept I want it to be gate kept by the boss and and that and that might you know upset people I think that's fair to be honest it's fair to me yeah or at least. Okay, you, they'll probably allow you to make, like, with the Mining Smithy rework, they'll probably allow you to make, you know, like, a primal hatchet that'll be, like, 120, maybe, I don't know, or, like, 110. But I think if you want the 120 hatchet, you should have to get it from the skilling boss. <clears throat> like, and it, and it should be a really rare drop. Screeches and skiller. But that's the thing, Nate. <laughs> a skiller should be able to get it, because it's a skilling boss. Yeah, so it should be designed for skillers to get it, and I'm not saying it should be easy. I think I think you should still work for it, but it, it, but it's not going to be anywhere near as bad as PVM, where you have to like worry about your health, worry about your worry about your like prayer points, or worry you know stuff like that. Um, if it's well designed, I th I think it should be something that skillers should, you know, hopefully enjoy doing. Kind of like I mean, if they do it based on health, like. They could just do it like old school for uh, Winter yeah. Todd, where your the damage you take is based on how much health you have. Yep. So it's just a percentage thing. Right. So yeah. like level threes take no, like I, I, no, upwards no, no. of three I, I, damage. I think, I think. I think the way they did it with Croesus is perfect. I think the health should just be your skilling stats. Like, <laughs> like if your yeah, skilling stats hit zero, then you're freaked. So yeah. so it still it still punishes you for having like level twenty hunter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you just get fricked at Croesus. Um, so they should just do that again for this for the new skilling boss where like yeah, your stats get work. drained. Um. But yeah, I, I I want what I want to see is the skilling boss drop either equipment pieces or just straight up the like the one twenty hatchet and 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 pickaxe or a way to to make them. And and I and I want to see the hatchet and pickaxe be use be prevalent in the skilling boss because I want I want you to get buffed. If you kill the skilling boss and you get the reward, I want you to be buffed to kill the skilling boss even more efficiently. Like I don't I don't want you to just be like yeah, just I, I like I like the I can just optimally do the boss with a tier ninety pickaxe. Like that doesn't sound right. You sh you should be you should be killing the boss like. Like fifty percent faster if you have a tier one twenty pickaxe than a tier than the one I have right now in my current toolbox or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's that's I think would be the best way to design it because it it gives reason yeah. to do the boss and not just or like, give it like do, some effect. Not do it for that, no reason. Like, yeah, give it some effect that would make it like exactly. Let's say effect. there's like a not yeah. boss equivalent one, but like the effect is like you clearly want this one over the other one. True. Yeah, the skilling boss could could literally just drop, to drop a, another skilling set, that and 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 the skilling set, you know, so you can augment it and add skilling perks to it. Holy frick! If you could add tool perks to your armor, wait a minute, <laughs> that that would be kind of nutty, because because you can only have what two tool perks on your on your tool, but if if your armor yeah. could have tool perks, you could have freaking six tool perks. Yeah, you. you can I'm be honest. Do there's not even there's not even enough relevant perks. Yeah, they, for it, they like, have to be add worth more it at the because <laughs> there's only like two good ones. Uh, freaking jackets. You got to think hard or about you, this. Or one. you get like the problem where it's like, oh well, I want imp salt, but I also want furnace, but they don't go. The, yeah, they, they, they don't have work anti, together. Anti They're anti synergy. Yeah, that, that doesn't work out. Yeah, yeah. They they need to update that, but that would be a very good idea if they if they added uh. They added a new like skilling armor set to augment. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah, I mean, yeah. You can even add stuff to to buff the original armor sets, Nath, and and make them augmentable and stuff. Like it's, it's like a similar idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be very very good and like very meaningful buffs. Because the thing that would be the worst case scenario is they release a skilling boss, and let's just say it it just buffs your tier ninety nine pickaxe to like tier a hundred and ten or something stupid like that. 
And it's it's just like <laughs> super meaningless. It's it's like oh, I can still do the boss with the tree nine nine pickaxe, and the difference is like, it's like one percent. Like doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't like because that that it, then it just makes the whole boss fight irrelevant. Kind of kind of yeah, like yeah. Vorkath was for the majority. I mean, even till now, it's pretty much irrelevant. Uh, mostly because the rewards are just so useless. But yeah. Uh, okay. I think we talked pretty much. Of Pretty much everything about the skilling boss and what we hope to see in it and the rewards to make it meaningful um they talk about you know adding a new slayer monster for the slayer necromancy helmet or the slayer helm upgrade for necromancy which makes perfect sense because all the the three other styles have a boss that drops something that buffs the damage so of course it makes sense to have a necromancy one dropped by a monster um Okay, let's just you know, we're let's just talk let's talk about the the woodcutting and fletching, and then we'll talk about quest, and then maybe we'll talk about the future. So let's let's last few things. So woodcutting and fletching. Uh, any it's any a thoughts? fucking mess. It's a fucking mess. Dear God, those skills need a rework. Okay, so so you're very Let, happy they're getting reworked. <laughs> let's let's just take a quick look at fletching real quick. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's just uh, scroll down a little bit and just see how absolutely messed up stuff is. Mm -hmm. Dragon arrow. Yeah, let me actually go. Tier 60 with you. requires level 90 fletching. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, you, so you're talking about just the straight up, like, the, the level. Uh... The level curve, in a way, or... it is completely yeah out of fucked. Whack. No, you're right. Or, or you know how uh level sixty arrow at level ninety fletching. Yep, it is very. Mm -hmm. Dina arrows, tier ninety five. What level can you fletch them at? Ninety five. What if I wanted to fletch a dragon dart? Tier sixty two, fucking bad. Level yep, ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that that stuff is more like. Yeah, they're definitely gonna do that because when they did the Namani Smithing work, they moved all the rune stuff from nine nine to like fifty. So yeah, that's definitely yeah. gonna get moved around for sure. Yeah, it has to because oh my god, okay. these skills need help. Okay, but, but, uh, the but other outside thing... of that, like like what else do you think about it? Because that's just like something you're gonna uh, do. I I'm very happy for it personally. Okay. Like like so for me, like when I would cut, like I I just go elder trees or like bamboo because I can just chill and do it. Okay. I'm not like constantly hunting like oh my I got one log trees for like six trees in a row. Oh, okay, okay. So you're you're excited like, for this on the skilling side of it because you want to yes, do like, the skilling. Okay. Like uh, for the act like like the best part about elder logs is you click, you wait five minutes, yeah. and like you might your inventory might fill up, you might need to and I, fill yeah. your little I think box it's been up. confirmed that that's how they're changing all the trees now. So you, you, yeah, you just but, sit there for a while now. And yeah. Yeah, but it, it's not like just this constant. Like, it, it's a skill that should be like one of the more like relaxing, you just kind of do it kind of skills. But it's only that way with like two trees. <laughs> <laughs> and everything else is yeah. kind of just like uh good luck yeah mm. no no I, yeah I, I think i think we saw something on twitter where they, they're changing all the tree spots to be kind of like the kind of like the mining ones where there's gonna be like a bunch of trees and then one of the trees is gonna be glowing so you just like hit that one you get like more logs or more logs or more progress for the logs so yeah mm. I, I i like that change completely as well you'll have 120 of both of these by the time the rook drops that's good I definitely will not, but, uh, you know. <laughs> but I, I am excited to, like, kind of see the curves not be nearly as yeah. hectic. Yeah. Um, okay. But other than that, like, I don't really have anything super specific, I'd say. Like, I think, I think it is time. I know this doesn't really make sense currently because the ranged gear is from crafting but frick it let's just move it to fletching don't ask how that makes any sense we're freaking playing runescape it doesn't make sense i think the the woodcutting fletching rework should add masterwork for ranged ranged masterwork 
It should freaking require all this random garbage, like all all the freaking like studded <laughs> leather and like leather of the freaking. Wait, that's still crafting, but you frick it, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, that's still crafting. They'll they'll fi they'll fix it in somehow. I I like the premise. I would just like it to have a different effect than melees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It for sure should not have the same effect. But I I like the idea of it being like a a long stand grind to yes, make. Yes, a long grind to make yeah. the to make the ranged master work. And I think like like not necessarily for the ammo because ammo is designed to be consumable, so you don't want that to be complete hell like masterwork. Yeah. But I I don't think it should be um I don't think it should compete with with Dracolich because it was literally the most recent ranged armor. It should be mm -hmm. tank armor, kind of like Cripplum. Okay, that's fair. Slightly off topic, but I wasn't here. Did you guys have comments regarding seasonal stuff? We didn't talk about it yet. But I know I don't I don't really think there's much to talk about for that. It's, I think I think I know we could just bring it up right now. Like I think it's, seasonal stuff is nice, but it's, it shouldn't be the main focus of you know a patch. It, it should just be like a side thing that we all like doing. For me, it's like like you either need to go all out like the beach and make it so that whatever the seasonal thing is where everyone wants to be, or you need to make it like the old school or like not old school RuneScape, but just older type events from in the past where it's just like, Hey, I spend 10 minutes. I have a good laugh. I enjoy I myself. Nice and then I move on and move on. Yeah. yeah I get this. Yeah. I get this funny snowboard that I can use while moving around the GE and then I'm done. <laughs> like I either want you to put like significant yeah. effort into it and you make it yeah. worth me like spending and I significant think... amounts of time there and not mm. just for pressing one button for hours on end. Yeah. Or you make it quick. We have a good laugh. We move on. <laughs> yeah, and I think Jagex is is more going towards the. Yeah. They're they're, they're gonna they're gonna, like the, I think they like doing the seasonal events now, but they're gonna they're not gonna do it at the cost of main events anymore. I think that was like mod keepers' decision. They got them out of there. But okay. Um. Where where were we about the. Uh, where were we at? The fletching? What, what, woodcutting and fletching. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got for it. Uh, Bush or anyone? Wanna add, do you have anything to add to that? Not really, to be honest. Heck yeah. Okay. Um. Anything we want to talk about with group Iron Man? <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's just... It's too late. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I have, I have no opinion on group Iron. They like, should have came out long yeah. ago. <laughs> It's not content for me. The only so thing I'm, that I'll really... say is I think the people that will enjoy it will absolutely enjoy it. Um, I think the people that don't care about it will not care about it. So Yeah, that's it's just, very accurate. It's just, that's just <laughs> it. <laughs> I think it's good. I, I think it's totally good that the people that are going to enjoy it will enjoy it. And if they don't, people don't enjoy it, totally fine. Okay. Uh, final thing, the... New story quests. Uh, Bush, I'm sure you're going to have so many great opinions about this. Uh, where... Ooh. Story. So, wait, Brain, am I spoiling? Did you finish... Um, did you finish, like, the uh, the extinction line? Um, I haven't done, like, the Zamorak-specific stuff in okay, Zamorak but, but and I, Undercity, but I, I, I know the implications you, like of what happens. It's, like, extremely obvious not, what happens, right? it's, Yeah, it's not the it, you, you could it, literally see in the Zami fight, in the in the boss yeah. fight, that you kick him out of Gilinor. So, so like, he, yeah. he gets... So, all the gods... You, you reestablish yeah. the edicts. Yeah, right? all, all the gods are booted out, and Zami's the last one to go, it, as <laughs> shown in the fight. So, um... Where is Jagex going with the lore? Now, I I want to say that I feel like the fort stuff that came after the the whole god thing, the whole fort line with you know the the Majorats that that were left over, um, who's the girl Mo Moira that was uh you know kind of mm -hmm. stirring some stuff, um, the whole thing with Vorkath and and now with like the necromancy stuff. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a mess. Like I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Um and and I'll just say, okay, that I know that 
it's kind of hard to follow up from that whole like massive god thing. It's it's kind of like you know you know the Marvel universe after Avengers Endgame, they yeah. had to like follow up with some stuff, and it, and anything they followed up with would would not be anywhere near as exciting as Endgame was. Um, so it's kind of like that thing where all oh, the, the whole like climactic finish with Zami kicking all the gods out. It's like yeah, whatever they followed up with, of course wasn't going to be as hype as it. But I do think that even a smaller scale storyline is still a very interesting storyline if it's if it's told well. I, I think so to go on your topic of that is in my opinion, the best thing they could have done was just started completely fresh with something. Okay, so so it just be completely disconnected from the, just the, the previous things. You're right, like yeah. it like hey, like we recognize that these world events are happening. But we got smaller problems that we're dealing with right now, so uh, okay. I don't got time to focus on that. Okay. Like in, in my opinion, that's like the best course of action that they could take. I, I think you're Cause, right because like you're at a pinnacle, and you're right. The only way, like, you, there is no more going up. Like you, you have reached like yeah. this absolute merging of all these storylines. But the only way you're ever going to be able to reach that point again is to start new storylines. Yeah, I, I so totally rather than agree. rather than trying to like, oh, try and stay at the pinnacle, actually like plan like a good story out that you can see all the way through. Yep. I'm looking at you, Gnome Quest, where we still haven't seen nope. Abyssandra. Bro, like, I, me and Bush are just sitting here like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Base bar go burr. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, no, I agree. Yeah, you. Uh, so. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's bad that Jagex is is going with Moira and, like, the other Modrots, but I think, like, like Brain was said, I don't think you just directly go into it. You could just leave them there, let them let them cook for, like, you know, a few months to a few years, and then maybe bring them back later and be like, hey, remember Moira? Like, she's she didn't leave, and she's doing stuff while we focus on another storyline in the in this world that's actually yeah, it, well the, thought The problem out. is... That- it's directly focused on them. Yes. And so it's just like, and it just it's feels just like mentally exhausting. It is. Yeah. And it just feels like, Oh, like I just spent all this time caring about Zami and like all these other guys. And now I have to care about like their children. Like who freaking cares about them? Like, yeah. Like uh, let me care about something incredibly stupid instead. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I got to help some sap, like save some sap from a court summons. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, the, and but, village, yeah, but, like, then, but then it like secretly leads to some like you know un- but then it just spirals out of control and like 12 like, quests system. later yeah <laughs> uh, th- like these these like underground factions like taking over the cities since the gods left yeah like that, that's part that of the reason cool. like that's part of the reason like so many of the smaller seasonal quests are loved is because it, it it's just something that completely like for a moment, you're just brought away from the larger picture, and you just get to focus on this one small issue. Yeah. And when you look at how a lot of the quests all start in the game, it's all just one yeah. really it, it tiny, starts seamless off as just some random thing. Problem. Yeah. And right. then then it just snowballs into something. Like you start in Cook's assistant, and then all of a sudden you're in Recipe for Disaster. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you're totally right. And just everything goes to shit. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and, and but Snow rescue saying, disaster wouldn't be anything without. Yeah, it doesn't have a base. You initially sampling some random ass helping chef, the, helping the lumber chef. Yep, and like making a name as oh, I know how to cook. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and Snow is saying to finish the unfinished storylines. Yeah, for sure. It is weird that gnomes. we're not finishing. We're just leaving stuff unfinished. That's we've seems got kind of te- stupid. They, for whatever reason, put a fucking cliffhanger in the desert series. So that one's technically not finished now either. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't even remember nowadays like what's finished and what's not finished. I freaking no idea. There's too many like branching paths. Okay. Um, and also, of course, with questing, um, I really, I just want to bring up this small thing with with questing and lore. I think. What they did with the Zami boss fight, despite Mod Ramen making it one of the worst bosses in existence, like mechanic wise, I think the actual fight lore wise is incredible. I think mm-hmm. the fact that they designed 
that huge, you know, boss fight. Essentially as as the as the ending to that whole like god series is it makes the fight itself so much more meaningful than just like a random fight. Like I'm I'm going to be honest, I yeah. I I love Telos and you know, but like wh like who is Telos like in the lore? Like why does he even exist? Like he doesn't he doesn't even need to exist. I'm going to be completely honest mm -hmm. with you. The lore was just kind of shoved in there. Um like hell, like even if you ignore Telos, like at least the other God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses, like they made this whole story when we were restoring the heart like at the very initially before it was ever even like the dungeon was accessible like we learn like all these factions like what they have going for and against each other and like the actual yeah, like small players into. that yeah whereas tell us just like oh hey i exist is tell us related and to i'm gonna scenes? yes um and yeah the, the problem though is nath is like telos wasn't at least from my recollection, maybe if you guys are lore experts, uh, correct me. But when Telos was, re was released, it was just sort of like shoved in after the fact. It's like they made the boss and then they made the lore after that. So it just felt like, oh, by the way, uh, Telos is, exists in the heart. And also Telos is related to Gothics because he's anim anima based. And uh, yeah, just uh, accept that. It's kind of like with Solak too. It was where it just kind of felt like nothing re like referred to Solak ever in the, in the lore. But all of a sudden he just appeared. And he's just like a part of the Goth like anima and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but in, like In defense though, I'm giving that as a problem specifically to Jagex, because you could have easily just said that, hey, this it's just man anima taken manifest. Okay. And that like hey like, like you can allude to hey this we yeah. discovered this random region that has a ton of anima. Let's go check it out. And then all of a sudden yeah. then it's like this was a sacred site in the past. It's not really used anymore. So we kind of shut it off to the rest of the right. Room. Like you have options here. Like they, they could have done it better. We're just I agree. Go harder, it's Guthics. And it's it's go a Guthics anima guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so my, my point, the point I'm trying to make is I, I feel like, I feel like a lot of stuff like PVN, like even like mini games, like whatever the frick you have, you make updates for the game when it's connected to the lore it's it's so much cooler to to just the average person mm -hmm. than just uh, just some random boss appears like oh it's a good boss like and I, I'm sure you guys in like Final Fantasy experience that too right when when the boss is connected to the lore it feels a lot meaning more meaningful um, to do it. it it's different because it's like the way in Final Fantasy at least is like you have these like story bosses okay. but then the actual fights are these like. Like it's Not essentially like fanatical. Well, no, no, it's like fanatical retelling of uh, like basically it's like literally just like a joke where it's like someone's like singing your praises and exaggerating okay, the battle. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. I mean, yeah, yeah, but that's that's kind of the same thing with like with Zami because Zami is an enraged boss, and who knows how tough he he is in, in the lore, like how strong he really is. But like, I can fight Zami at. 5,000 in rage, but in the lore, you he might have only been at, like, like 90 in rage or something. Like, I don't know, like... Yeah. Um, so it's it's kind of, like, kind of has that. I don't know. I, I'm just saying, like, I really appreciate the Zami fight and all the, all the, like, lore behind it, even though it's implemented mechanically very badly. And, yeah. and I like that better than, like, Telos, even, because I think, I think the, the fight, the Zami fight was extremely meaningful. Whereas when I do the Telus fight, it's like, like I don't even know why I'm killing this guy. Like it sounds like he's like on my side. Like why am I killing the guardian of the heart? Like, like <laughs> why? <laughs> All right. Uh, any any more lore stuff, you guys? Let me read the what, what Nate's saying. Um, problems. I need to stay aware of the power creep and not making anything new feel way less intimidating. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's and Jagex has always been bad at that. Like the recent bosses have all been very horribly made. More Dragonkin stuff. I thought the Dragonkin stuff was all kind of was all kind of wrapped up with with like Karapak sort of getting fricked by the by the, the needle. There There is a lot of loose ends on the dragonkin side the problem is and they is, were freed like, right because the egg the stone was destroyed so like what are they it, doing now? that's yeah i think the bigger problem is that uh 
like they're their stories are sprinkled throughout other like we happen to have one with like you know with Carapac and stuff, but oh, okay. a lot of the dragon stuff we find out are really random quests. True. Yeah, like like there's like there's like a lot of like the dragonkin in yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's well, like it's like Snow is saying there's two different kinds. You've got the Dactyl and I forget what the other one is, but like one's the the, the Noden. Uh it might it, I don't think I don't remember. Basically, yeah. you got like the ones who are mainly science, the one who are mainly war. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, they they could do more. They, yeah, they could expand to stuff like that. So uh, yeah. Anyways, I think our, we all sort of agree, right? That it would be better to go on these like side quest stuff that lead to bigger quests rather than just go back to Moira and be like, oh, why? What's Moira up to? Like, I don't freaking care. Freaking build up back to her. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Any last lore stuff? Um, I personally we... don't have anything. I, I honestly think we got. I'm sure Bush is uh so. Face bar go burn. <laughs> I'm sure Bush is fully intent with this conversation. <laughs> okay. Bush is probably right now on like looking at a second monitor, just trying to pretend like we're not having this conversation. Oh, right yep, now. pretty much. <laughs> I was watching a video while. Perfect. What? Well, well, listening. What <laughs> okay, so uh, last, so final thing for this uh, episode. So that's we covered the whole roadmap for twenty twenty four. Let's talk about twenty twenty five. Um, anything remarkable in the survey? Let me try to think that they were mentioning. They they mentioned the skill ports, prestiges. Ports, 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 ports. They, ports, they had a ports, lot of stuff ports, on ports, ports, but I but I have a I have an inkling of a suspicion that so many people are gonna freaking downvote ports that they're not gonna touch it. So I don't think ports is getting any updates. Um, it's literally the best content in the game they did mention skill prestiges which i we talked about like on our own time that they might they might allow you to prestige your skill so when you hit 200 mil in a skill you could reset it back to zero <clears throat> I'm, I'm assuming zero and maybe it resets to 99 i don't know but let's just assume it goes back to zero and then you can go it again which um per, which would really cause a lot of interesting things to happen because like bush was saying uh, um to me he said it would reignite the race uh for skills because you theoretically could have an infinite number of of prestiges like you could have like a hundred thousand prestiges right and and there wouldn't be enough time on this freaking the heat death of this universe to get to get that much experience um yeah so that that is an option they could do. I don't know how players would like it, because, but I mean I don't know. Because if I was a skiller and I hit five point four bill all, I might be like, oh, I'm done with skilling, thank God. Or I might be like, oh, they added this prestigious. I can now skill for the rest of my life. I'm so happy. Like I I don't know which one I would be, because uh, I'm not a skiller. Uh, like for me, I probably wouldn't even prestige because I just, unless there was a <laughs> reason to prestige. They might add the inverted skill capes to the prestigious. So if you prestige once and you get 120 <clears throat> again, then you'd get the inverted skill cape, which makes a lot of sense. That would be... And, I would yeah. be so down with that. And um, it, it, it would promote people to play the game again, and it would promote people to, even to buy treasure hunter keys. So it is kind of like a win-win for them, which it does kind of look like they might be doing to prestige for the inverted cape. Um, anything else in the survey that was interesting... Ports, ports. <laughs> ports. I'm a skiller, yet honest to God, wouldn't want a prestige, right? Because, because imagine you prestiged all of your skills from 200 mil back to zero. It is be essentially like you just making a new account. Why not get inverted keep at 200 mil? It's because Jagex wants to make money. They, they, because there's already like a thousand people that have 200 mil all Maria. <clears throat> they want those guys to still give them money so they so they will want you to prestige and not at 200 mil let me prestige invention and then make it so whenever you uh get 120 again under the prestige everything's guaranteed to get so i don't spend 700 mil on a freaking perk <laughs> nope that's not happening <laughs> it's still gonna be exactly the same <laughs> but yeah all right though i, I think we got the good gist of everything. 
Um, I guess we didn't really talk uh -huh. about the archaeological site. Uh, uh, it's cool, but yeah. fuck Damonheim. <laughs> it's related to engineering, and therefore I don't Damn. like it. Okay. Uh, hold on, wait. Um. Okay. If you guys don't have anything to add, I just want to add <clears throat> that I think for the future of this game, there's been a lot of players that have been neglected. And mm -hmm. I think it's nice that Jag Jagex is taking feedback from the community. But a lot of the feedback that they're going to get from the existing player base is just an echo chamber of ideas that will appease them, but not the the greater community you know, of, of RS players, especially players that left. So a lot of people might not even want new raids because they've had bad experiences with raid FC or like with AOD and they'll be, Oh, I want solo content. But I think we all can agree that it's much better for the game to prosper, to have group content. Oh yeah. So I, I want Jagex. It's, to it's realize, an MMO. I would hope. Yeah, there would be exactly. Group content. But like, if they only listen to the people that still play the game, that they might not realize that. So I, I need Jagex to realize that there is a much bigger RS player base than than the players that are answering the survey. They need to realize what the game has lost. And I'm talking about, you know, specifically the PvP community. The whole PvP community is dead. But it can be revived yeah. with, with very easy updates. The the minigame community, which, you know, a lot of it is PvP related. But, you know, there's a lot of not PvP related minigames as well. You know, and even stuff like the role playing community, there there could be so much stuff they could do to help the role play community, such as, you know, World Forty Two having a little bit more stricter measures against trolling and stuff like that. You you could have, you you can implement world bans. You know, um, if it let's let's say you go to not just like the role playing world, but any like you know you go to like the, the you go to the 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 community world for Croesus and you go to the Croesus world and you just freaking troll every Croesus kill, right? You just throw every kill. You should, you should get banned from that world. Like you just can't go in the world and it could be a temp ban. It could be a permanent ban. They should implement, implement world bans. If they implemented world bans, stuff like the role playing world would be so much better for, you know, the whole entire community. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think Jagex really needs to look at stuff like that. That that will bring way more players into the game than just trying to appease the currently dwindling player base. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Uh, they killed role playing by killing the forums. People literally only do mini games for the currency. Uh, yeah, but 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 you but you can update that, right, Nath? You can update the currency to to have a lot more stuff, and you, and you can make it easier to get by playing the mini games, not just AFK and the mini games. You can sell the rewards back for even more Thaler to make it even more worth it to play the mini games. So there's a lot of systems they could add into the game that would benefit that whole the whole Thaler system. All right, any final? Things about the roadmap 2025 Jagex or RuneScape. Anyone want to add? Uh, I personally don't have anything. I am excited to see what comes, though. I will say that much. Heck yeah, I am too, Brain. I'm glad you're on board. Bush, you're excited? I think Bush is dead. God dang it. Okay, uh, well, it's time for a poll. You know, honestly, I don't think people really have many spicy Look, takes today. You know, so what's you know what? I'll, I'll, uh, the, you want to do the poll? What is it? Uh, I'll just do the next one just to say it. What? The, the, okay. We all were pretty in agreement on stuff, minus like yeah. the one random thing that I'm gonna like, do a we poll don't anyways. like. I'm going to do a poll anyways, though. Okay. The poll um, I think is... the poll should be who likes feet the most. No, no, that was the last one. Yes, no, we're not doing yes, that one. Again. I agree okay. with this. I think who... we should do that one. Who likes mod keeper the most why am i getting voted for <laughs> get fucked i think both of us voted you <laughs> <laughs> wow i don't even know yeah who i don't even think i don't even is. think bush knows who that wait someone I don't even care brain. who he is <laughs> well no no, no 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 hear me out hear me out this is why bush likes mod keeper the most andy is 
RuneScape's biggest fan, and yeah. then getting rid of Mod Keeper means Mod Keeper's no longer a part of RuneScape, which makes him uh -huh. happy. So he obviously hates Mod Keeper. I am an okay RuneScape fan, and since Mod Keeper is no longer with the company, I'm just kind of okay with it. Since Bush barely even plays RS in any capacity other than logging on for drops, he clearly doesn't like RS. And since Mod Keeper has left RS, therefore he's most on Mod Keeper's side. There we go. There we go. Perfect, perfect, in, infallible logic. Bush likes Mod Keeper the most. <laughs> All right, well, we pretty much know the answer to this one. I don't think anyone's going to change it at this point. So thanks, everyone, for watching this episode of Baked Fish Brains. As usual, let me let us know in the comments what you think about this subject. We read all of them. And uh, be sure to let us know also what other things you want us to talk about. Yes. And until next time, uh, have a good one, everyone. Catch you all later. Bye-bye, everyone. Brain sucks. You damn right. I did a lot of sucking to suck this suck.